Today I'm going to present some strategies for time management and how to organize yourself, um, which hopefully will help as you move through the OT program here at the University of Mary. So generally speaking, time management is the process of organizing and planning how to divide your time between different activities. So as you move through the OT program, there are going to be countless activities, right? Activities meaning assignments, meetings, class times. Um, and then you'll have personal meetings or personal things going on in your lives too. And you're going to be expected to manage all of those things. And there's only so much time in a day, right? And so when we're looking at time management skills, it's so important because when we manage our time effectively, we're improving our overall performance. Um, we produce better work. Um, we deliver our work on time. When we have effective time management skills, we actually reduce our stress. We boost our confidence. We increase our productivity. And the big thing about time management that I've noticed with, especially with graduate school, is time management transfers to our personal lives, not just our professional lives. So as an OT, um, I would struggle with time management because part of my time was spent in an outpatient clinic, which was fine because they had a lot of times throughout the day, right? So I might have an eight o'clock to a nine o'clock patient, nine o'clock to 9.30, 9.30 to 10, right? Then I might have um, maybe 15 minutes of documentation time before another client. Um, but where I really struggle with time management is that then I would have to go to a skilled nursing facility across town. And then I wouldn't have that set schedule anymore. And I would have to figure out, okay, I have six residents I need to see. I have two and a half hours to see them. I need to spend this much time with this resident, right? And I would have to do that independently every day on the fly. And so I feel like when I created this module, I was ref reflecting a lot on that. Um, I was reflecting a lot on um, my time in graduate school and how we had multiple assignments due, we had to manage our time to study throughout our time before we would have exams, right? We did, it didn't work anymore to study the day before an exam. I had to study little bits along the way continuously. And so I felt like graduate school was a marathon, um, not a sprint, but a marathon that I had to sort of manage my time for long periods of time, right? Um, I feel like now in, in my personal life, instead of papers that are due, exams to prepare for, I mean, I certainly have things that I, I have to do for my job to manage my time. Um, I have to show up to class on time. I have to prepare my lecture material. I have to make sure my assignments are graded. Right? I have to do those kinds of things. But in my personal life, I have to um, plan doctor's appointments, right? plan eye appointments, plan dentist appointments, plan physical fitness, plan um, meal plan, meal prep, get to the grocery store. Right, I have to do all of those things, not just for myself, but for my family as well. And so when, when again, when creating this, I, I really reflected on those skills I learned in graduate school to prepare for things um, certainly has impacted my professional as well as my personal life. So um, where do we make mistakes? Okay, so when, when um, working on our time management, the biggest mistakes that we make is failing to prioritize. So knowing what to prioritize, what not to prioritize. Do I prioritize this reflection or do I prioritize studying for this exam? 
Okay, I think a lot of times in graduate school, um, we have deadlines, right? We have assignment due dates, and those due dates can help serve to help us prioritize. But I think the biggest mistake graduate students make, and, and I, I know I've been there also, is failing to plan enough time to complete that task, okay? Another time management mistake that, that people make is starting your day late. I know we are all probably sleep deprived. Students are sleep deprived, parents are sleep deprived, everybody is sleep deprived, right? Hitting snooze on the alarm clock feels so good some days, right? But starting your day late has an effect on your time management skills throughout your whole day. So you're more likely when starting your day late, you're more likely to show up to class late, right? You're more likely to be flustered. Um, you're more likely to um, carry on those, those, those poor organizational skills throughout your entire day. Okay, some days I have days where I didn't get out the door in time with my kids to take them to a doctor's appointment. I ended up being 10 minutes late. The doctor saw somebody else. And so that made us 30 minutes late before the doctor was able to see us, right? Then I had to drop them off at, a, at another appointment for therapy. Um, I was 10 minutes late for that. So it just seems like it snowballs throughout the course of your day, and then it increases your overall anxiety, right? Um, <clears throat> this kind of goes along with failing to prioritize, but in effectively scheduling tasks. I think sometimes we don't always um, know how much time something's going to take, right? And so we sometimes don't allot ourselves enough time to complete a task. Um, Sometimes um, we have people who procrastinate, okay? And this could be a personality thing. Um, this certainly can be a time management mistake is when we procrastinate too long and then we don't leave enough time to work on a particular task. Um, another mistake that we tend to make is failing to manage distractions. We live in an era right now where we are plugged in constantly, right? Cell phones, um, email, um, family, right? We're just, we're constantly plugged in. Um, and then when I'm trying to work on something, right? I get a text message or I get an email or I get something that pops up, or I see somebody walk by my office, right? Or my dog potties on the floor and I have to clean that up. Or, you know what, I remember I have laundry that I'm doing and I have to go get a load of laundry and put it the wash into the dryer, right? Um, oh, now I sat down, now I have to get up and use the bathroom or gosh, I could go for a coffee. And so when we don't manage those distractions, right, then we're not, we're not spending enough time actually doing the things that we're supposed to do. Um, that kind of goes along with, um, we've talked about underestimating your time, um, but multitasking, right? Now, multitasking can be a strength, right? I'm able to, to have um, the ability to juggle a bunch of tasks at one time. And I think to a point, multitasking is necessary in graduate school, right? We have to be working on this group assignment um, and we have to be studying for this exam and we have to be working on this paper um, and we have to do our laundry and we have to cook for ourselves and we have to go to the grocery store, right? But I think um, what, what we mean by multitasking here as a mistake is, um, they're becoming distractions, right? So if I'm really anxious about studying for this exam and I put all, I need to put all my time into that exam, right? I can't get distracted about, oh yeah, that's right. I have this reflection I need to do. So I'm going to work on that for a little bit. Okay, well, I think that's done. Now I'm back to this exam. Oh, wait, I have that paper. 
And so when they when they say multitasking mistakes, it's when you are working on something, make sure your mind is focused on that one thing. Okay. Um, busy versus being effective. So um, I call this spinning my wheels. Um, some days when I'm having time management issues myself, um, and this is when I'm usually distracted or when I have a lot of things I need to get done all in a short time frame, um, I might work a little bit on this and, and appear busy, right? But I'm doing little bits here and there and I'm not becoming as effective. Another time management mistake is being perfectionistic, um, meaning that we put too much time into things sometimes, right? Because we want to get 100%. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing to want to gain knowledge, but sometimes when it's, it's impacting our ability to complete tasks on time, because, oh, if I just hang on to it for another day, right? I'll get it just perfect. Well, then the due date passes, right? And then that becomes a problem. Um, so I have seen that happen when, when students do become so perfectionistic, um, but then they miss some of those deadlines um, because they just quite weren't finished, which then leads to them underestimating their time needed or managing to, or failing to manage their distractions or failing to prioritize with those due dates. On the flip side, skipping breaks, right, is a mistake also. Um, our brain needs some of those breaks. We need to break for food. If we don't have food, our brain concentrates on being hungry and doesn't concentrate on our task at hand, okay? Um, and so just allow the time needed, right, and schedule in those breaks. Um, and your brain will be better for it. Um, a time management mistake is also skipping time for planning, right? And so what this means is when you manage your time, we have to plan your time accordingly. And when we fail to make that plan, right, that's, that's skipping time. And so Students who have a really hard time managing their time um, often don't have a planner, right? Or they don't sit down with their syllabus schedule or they don't do some of those things ahead of time, right? They don't write out their schedule ahead of time. They sort of take things as they come. Well, then that's when things get forgotten or things get missed. And so take that time for planning. So these are the most common time management mistakes that we can take or that we make. And, and I think we all, when we look at them, we can then turn those mistakes into strategies or tips because we can look at those mistakes and we can say, oh yeah, that's right, I need to do that, right? Oh yeah, that's right. Um, when creating this PowerPoint voiceover, right? I turn my email off. I turned my um, ringer off on my cell phone, okay? So I, I took away some of those distractions. Um, prioritizing. So you can, like I said, in graduate school, we do have a lot of due dates, right? That you'll have to keep up on. Um, and I think sometimes Canvas does a good job for you, um, but you'll notice that sometimes, like as an instructor, if I have staggered due dates for one assignment, meaning this group presents in September, this group presents in October, this group presents in November, I can't put a I can't put multiple due dates in Canvas. So Canvas won't have that due date. Those particular due dates for those groups will be in the syllabus schedule. Okay. And so sometimes if students are just looking at Canvas due dates, um, they will sometimes miss um, those due dates if they're not checking the syllabus schedule. And so then they, they miss that prioritizing. Now, something I found um, as a tip is on the right-hand side on how to prioritize. And so if something is important and urgent, do now, 
right? And so if something is important, like maybe your grade on an exam, and it's urgent, meaning that um, the urgency is the exam is tomorrow, right? We'll study now. <laughs> okay, it's urgent. Um, if something's important, like maybe your reading assignment um, for a particular course, but it's not urgent, meaning that you don't have the course for a couple days, right? You can do that next. Okay. Um, if something is not important, um, meaning, let's see here, something is not important, but it's urgent. Maybe it's something like something leisure. Okay. Meaning, um, I like to exercise so many times per day. I like to get so many miles of running in per week. So I feel a sense of urgency, um, but it's not necessarily important at the moment. Um, and so I can either do that later on in the week or in some cases, maybe delegate. Now I can't delegate somebody else to exercise for me, right? But maybe there's another example you can think of where maybe, you know, um, something's not necessarily important for your schooling, um, but you're feeling a sense of urgency for it. Um, this might be a call to a family member, right? Um, maybe it's not important. Um, I mean, maybe it's your mother and it's urgent, right? Um, but maybe it's not important because the house isn't on fire or something like that. And so, you know what, I will call her back or I will send her a text message saying, I will call you back at five o'clock today um, because I am studying until then. Now, if something is not important and it's not urgent, okay, simply ignore it, right? Maybe it's junk email or something along those lines, okay? And so you can simply ignore that. So again, you can use a chart like this to help you prioritize, if you will. Um, literature also recommends that we do our most difficult work when we're the most productive. Now, I tend to be the most productive with my work, and it kind of changes with the season, with the seasons, right? Um, but I'm most productive with my work around mid-morning, okay? 9, 10, 11 o'clock, um, I'm the most productive. And so those are the times when I'm preparing some of my more difficult content for my job, okay? Um, how to, or preparing my lecture for um, statistics, right? A statistics course I teach, um, where I really have to have that heavy concentration. That's the time when I'm gonna look at that information. Now, when I was in graduate school, my most productive time was between 10 p.m., right, and 2 a.m., and so that didn't necessarily work very well with sleep, and that's a whole other issue, um, but I felt like those times I was less distracted, right? I wasn't getting phone calls. I wasn't getting text messages. I wasn't getting emails coming in. Um, my personal needs were taken care of, um, I had dinner, right, I probably had a snack, um, those kinds of things, and so that was the time I could set aside when I wasn't going to go anywhere, I wasn't going to go, oh, I need to go get groceries, because the stores were closed, okay, so again, in graduate school, um, that's when I was the most productive, not that I'd recommend that for everybody, that just is what worked for me. Um, sticking to a schedule. And so I highly recommend you guys get a class schedule, right? I highly recommend you look at those times when you don't have class. Um, and maybe you start scheduling time um, for group work. Okay. Um, maybe at if you if you do find that exercise is something that you helps you manage stress, because you're going to be under a lot of stress. Okay, maybe you do that Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays from, you know, nine to 10 o'clock at night. I don't, I don't know. Um, I'd have to exercise before then, but nonetheless, right? Um, maybe you want to hang out with friends on um, Saturday. Okay, um, so maybe you plan something a, a week and ahead, a week ahead of time, right? And say, hey, 
let's all go out to dinner on Saturday from this time to this time. Okay, that way you have your exercise, maybe you have leisure. Some of you will also try and hold down part-time jobs, right? And so you'll have to manage that with your class time. Please keep time for your group work. I presented on that earlier. That tends to be a big issue with conflict is, is people um, aren't able to, to schedule those, those common times for group work. Um, so plan ahead, look ahead, um, use a planner, some kind of a daily planner, weekly planner, monthly planner, um, or some type of technology. Um, I am a paper planner kind of a person, and I plan my time out. Um, I know you can't see it, but it's a monthly, it's a monthly planner, and I plan everything out um, a semester in advance, okay? Um, and so I have all my courses, um, I jot them down just on a monthly template, um, so I know when my class sessions are, okay? Then I go to my daily planner, and I'll actually type in, or I'll actually write in my, my course that I'm teaching, the time I teach it, and the topic, okay? Um, and then those daily schedules is when um, I might schedule meetings that pop up, something along those lines. Um, I always keep a notebook handy because things come up, right? Things change. So <clears throat> in class, I might say an announcement. Um, I might say something like, hey, you know what? I'm getting the sense that um, I'm hearing some panicking about a particularly, uh, or a particular assignment due date. Okay, um, so how about I change the due date to this particular date to give you guys a little bit more time? Okay, how's everybody feel about that? And it surprises me when I make that announcement in class that probably one fourth of the class misses that announcement or they forget or they're not paying attention, or they're not um, reminding each other as peers. And so then I'll have people that'll turn in the assignment early, right? And they'll say, oh, well, I, and they, they won't do very well on it. And then I'll give them feedback and I'll ask them what happened. And they'll say, well, later we, we found out that you changed the due date, um, but we had already done it. And so again, if, if you have that notebook handy or your daily planner handy, right? And you're, you're paying attention in class, jot those notes down, okay? Jot those notes down so you're paying attention. Those are the things that you need to take notes of um, in class that you need to write them out, right? Sticky notes. Oh my gosh, I have so many sticky notes in my office here just from things that, things that come up. Here's a notebook I have for my meetings, right? Or my things that come up if I'm on the phone um, or write on little pieces of paper, right? Oh, I have to do this then, right? Or my little to-do lists, um, those kinds of things. And so um, again, it goes with using a planner, right? Keep a notebook handy. Um, I recently was somewhere where I didn't have my notebook. Um, I was in Peru um, and I was bouncing from student group to student group um, and somebody would grab me and they would, you know, rattle off, hey, can you check this, 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 this. And so I did have my cell phone with me and I did open it up to my notes section just to jot down those details so that I didn't forget, okay, because I'm, I'm, I can be forgetful if I don't jot it down. So again, keep that notebook handy. Maybe there's some technology. I know some faculty here use their phone for scheduling, use Microsoft Outlook Calendar, all of those kinds of things. Um, just figure out some way that you can plan, right? So you don't lose track of those, those due dates, those priorities, those meetings, those kinds of things. Um, think about a way to organize your email. Um, and to organize Canvas. Um, 
as a faculty, I don't always know how students receive Canvas or how they navigate Canvas. Um, but if I have a course announcement I need to make, like say I'm say I'm sick or say I have to stay home with my kids and I can't make it to class, I go on my phone, right? And I go to my course and I go to announcements and I'll put post announcement. Now I've had students tell me that they don't get the announcements. And I've had students tell me that there's something in Canvas that they have to click push to email. Okay, and so anytime a, a, an instructor of any course posts a course announcement, it'll automatically be sent to your UMary email. Okay, and so think about, okay, getting set up for that. So if a, if a course, because you'll have a number of courses that you take each semester, and you'll have a number of faculty, right, make sure that um, you're all receiving those course announcements. Um, also, um, sometimes if I'm going to email individual students, say um, there's something I want to meet with somebody about, or I want to go over an assignment or something like that, um, I will send their, um, I will send through their UMary email because that's what I have access to, okay? Um, that's one of our policies here is we're supposed to use our UMary um, accounts for everything or email accounts. And so, make sure that you're organizing emails, make sure that you are checking your emails frequently, okay? Um, a lot of students and myself included, I will um, set my cell phone so that um, when I get a work email, um, it will be pushed to my phone. That way, if it is urgent, um, I, can, I can respond to it, okay? Um, no, I, I I, I don't expect students, and, and I hope you don't expect from faculty that we're on call 24-7, meaning that when you are studying for something on a, on a Sunday morning, right, and you have a question, you email your faculty. Um, most faculty likely won't respond to that until the business day, the next business day, okay? Um, if we get a lot of student emails over weekends or when we have time off, um, those sort of get pushed down, right? So they just kind of keep building. And then when we get back to work, we have to scroll through emails, right? Um, as faculty, I might get anywhere from 100 to 200 emails per day. Um, so I need to think about how I organize my emails. A lot of those emails are junk emails. Um, some of them aren't really urgent, um, meaning that um, you know they might be from a, a course representative or um, some kind of um, faculty resource, okay, um, that I might not need to look at right away. Um, if something comes from um, you, Mary administration. Um, you can, you can bet that I'm looking at that. Um, if something awful happens with a student or something like that and, and they reach out to me, if I see that it's urgent, I might reply back, um, right? Or, or um, I can be pretty flexible that way. But nonetheless, um, I organize it by flagging my emails, right? Or you can set it so that you can actually recheck it later. Um, I have had a lot of students where I've sent emails to and, oh, I never received your email. Well, I can go into my inbox or I can go into my sent folder and see that something was sent, that I sent it, right? And then I can confirm, oh, did I, did I put in the wrong email address? And nine times out of 10, that's what happened is I put in a wrong letter or, or a wrong number or something like that, right? Um, but on those other accounts, right, a student will say, oh, I didn't check my email or, oh, it got buried. And I, well, I understand that. But try and figure out a way then how you can organize your email so that you don't get buried. Okay? Because we do, as faculty, we rely on email communication with students um, quite often. Okay? 
and ask for help, ask each other for help. Um, I, I find this fascinating too. It's a lot different than when I was in OT school. My first um, thing that I would do when I would get to class was I turn to my neighbor and I'd be like, hey, this is what I have on, on my planner, right? Are there any meetings that I forgot today? Or when was that soda meeting again? Um, or, um, oh shoot, we have advising coming up. Did I schedule that meeting yet? Um, I'm not sure. When, when are you, did your advisor um, schedule the meeting yet? Or did they come up with their schedule yet on their door? Or how are they doing that, right? So my first go-to was always the people sitting next to me. If that person didn't know, I'd turn to the person behind me and say, hey, what do you think, right? Um, or, you know, and then we had, um, I'll remember, I remember her name, Susan, okay? She was one of my classmates in OT school and she would always say, um, Susan and Stephanie, um, either one of them would say, oh, reminder, um, so-and-so moved the due date of this assignment. Okay, does everybody remember that? Or, um, hey, remember we all have this meeting at such and such time today, right? And so there were, there were, People, I think, just have the, the sense of helping each other out. We're a community, um, right? And just kind of being giving friendly reminders, right? And asking each other for help instead of going to faculty um, for being the first, first case scenario. Like, um, there's been a couple times, especially with, with COVID over the years and stuff, where um, Maybe I wasn't able to make it to a class. Um, I sent out a class announcement, right? And then a student will email me, um, Dr. Lawson, did you cancel class today? Um, and then I'll get another email, Dr. Lawson, did you cancel class today? And then I'll get another email, Dr. Lawson, I, nobody's in class right now, what's going on? Um, and I always get a little frustrated with that because I sent the class announcement, right? Um, and instead of sending one person 20 different emails or getting 20 emails from different people, use your resources, right? Use your, go to your Canvas page, go to your syllabus, go to your peers um, and ask, ask them all for help, okay? And, and that's really gonna help you with your time management tips. How to organize. So, I've talked about some of these already. Um, this is a, a copy of your daily schedule, okay? So nine o'clock in the morning, um, right? You kind of see here, you have from 12 to two off. Um, you get a little break there. Um, this is your one, of course. Um, this section is your two. So your two will have 11 to 12 off. Um, two to three off. And, and so you can kind of see those blank, those blank places, okay? Um, get your academic calendar that's published by the university and all of your class schedules here, okay? And so here, again, here's your course schedule, academic calendar, I didn't pull that up, but your academic calendar is going to have the days off, right? So when is fall break? When are we done with classes on Thanksgiving for Thanksgiving? Okay. Um, when is Christmas break start? When is finals week? Okay. So get all of that stuff. Um, jot it down in your planner. Okay. Um, get your course syllabi schedules, the paper courses, right? They're all probably links on Canvas. Um, and go through and jot down your assignment due dates. Okay, jot down when you have class, jot down any changes. So you should have your daily schedule, you should write it out. Okay, this is a good starting point. So from eight to nine o'clock, maybe you are going to work with a group um, of group work. Okay, so every Monday morning at from eight to nine before class, you're going to meet to work on um, a particular assignment. Okay. Um, ID blocks of time in your daily schedule. So again, from eight to nine, um, maybe you wanna plan something. Maybe eight to nine before class, if you're a really productive person in the morning and you're a morning person, 
okay? Maybe that's when you want to um, study for your exams, okay? Um, Monday from eight to nine, maybe you wanna study for 705 or um, maybe, um, let's see here, from one to three on Wednesdays, um, maybe you are going to, again, schedule time to work with a peer, okay? Maybe um, five o'clock, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, maybe you're going to exercise at the gym. Um, so anyway, make note of all of those things, um, block times in your daily schedule and plan, even for the mundane things, okay? Remember um, a couple slides ago is one of the mistakes is we don't plan uh, we don't take time to plan, okay? Or we don't take breaks. And so maybe, you know, plan for lunch break. 12 to 12.30, take a lunch break. Or from 12 to one, um, go over to the crow's nest, right? And grab some lunch with a group member and pull out your, your computers and, and have a working lunch, okay? Something along those lines. Um, I always recommend looking a week ahead of time um, and checking off your assignments when completed. So for me, having the to-do lists, right, and to check things off and to cross them off is a really big reward for me. Um, so I really, really like that. Um, make sure that you're allotting time to check for emails. And so, again, I, I've told you this already, push Canvas notifications to your emails. Uh, make sure you're checking emails. Um, if you do get your emails pushed to your phone um, or your computer, right, check them before you leave campus. Um, check them before you come out to class. Um, check them maybe um, in the middle of the day because maybe a faculty needed to reach out to you and they want you to come by their office during lunchtime, something along those lines. So make sure that you're, you're checking up on those. Um, use one another for reminders, asking each other for help. I've already talked about that one. Um, use other program department resources and become familiar with them all. And so um, Canvas is certainly one of your resources. Um, there's the OT group page um, on Canvas. Um, just knowing what resources are where, there's writing resources in the group page, there's schedules in the group page. I think the more you know where your resources are, um, the more efficient you will be in your time. But you have to learn where some of that information belongs. Um, research guidelines is a document um, that tells you um, that Dr. Sibla and I created and, and you know, it, it um, outlines sort of the, the um, direction you'll go and what to include in your research. Um, your OT student handbook outlines all of the policies. Um, not that you're gonna remember all of the policies, but if you know where the policies exist and how to get to the student handbook, that's gonna save you time in the long run, okay? So again, becoming familiar with, with all of your resources, everything that, knowing what belongs where. So this is kind of an example. Um, this is a, a busy slide here, but what I started with here is we have our course schedule, okay? And so if you look here, um, 7.04 on Fridays, OTH 7.04, okay? Um, year one from eight to 10, that's when class is at. And so I took a little snippet Right up here, this is the first couple of weeks of class. And so this is our tentative schedule, tentative because it can change um, because of whatever, um, life circumstances, whatever. Um, so 7.04, we meet from 8 to 10 a.m. on Fridays. So week one on this particular date, this is what I have planned. So with this review, and then hour two, um, history and philosophy, um, occupation is complex, okay? And so you're reading in your assignments 
some of this stuff, history and philosophy, should be review from OTH 608 that you took this summer. Okay, so go back and look at some of those resources that talk about history, philosophy, occupation. You'll see here that that's the reading assignment. Okay, and I want that done for your first before your first day of class before your lecture. That way you know what the heck it is that I'm talking about here. Okay, um, here are your reading assignments. Um, Hinojosa and Kramer Royine, Chapter One, Willard Spackman, Chapter One, um, and then your review from 608. So, again, in your planning, uh, when you're looking at date 9 9, September 9th, right, write down here are my reading assignments, 704 reading assignments, right? That way you know that you know that you have to get them done and you can do them ahead of time, okay? Um, week two, you'll see here, here are the reading assignments, chapter two, three, chapter three. Um, <clears throat> so that's what I expect um, that students have at least reviewed before class. Um, week three, you'll see here lecture content is PEO. Again, if you're looking at your, your reading assignments ahead of time, you're going to know what PEO is, okay? You'll also notice that I have quiz one here covering weeks one and two. So all of this information, chapter one, chapter one, two, three, chapter three, all of this information is gonna be somehow covered on the quiz. Now we'll talk about this in class, um, but again, this is reading assignments. So this is gonna tell you, uh oh, quiz one opens at 6 a.m. on September 23rd and closes at 10 p.m. So by golly, I better go back to my class schedule here. And when am I going to have time to take my quiz, right, before it closes? And allocate that time so you make sure you get that, that in there, okay? So this is pretty much how most faculty in the OT program, um, what we have and how we've set up our schedules. Now, this is on your syllabus. Okay, your syllabus schedule. Below that, this here is Canvas. And so you'll see here we have announcements. And so again, make sure you're figuring out how to push any of those class announcements to your email. So if an instructor needs to get a hold of the entire class, that's how they're going to do it. Okay. Um, you can go to syllabus, click on that to get to get a copy of your syllabus and to get this here, this document here, um, modules. And so this is a screenshot of your modules. If I click on week one, okay, it's gonna take me to this right here. And this is how I set up a lot of my Canvas courses. Um, and so I have, oops, overview, read, lecture, and so my objectives, what I want students to get out of this first class, here are my class objectives. Okay, so this is what I, these are my little goals that I have for you. Readings should be the same as your syllabus here, but they're there for you, one click, one click stop, right? Um, I also um, found this video from AOTA, it's a YouTube video. And so if you can watch it before class, um, that will really help our discussion um, on that first day, okay? Um, so again, you're gonna have to be clicking on um, your week modules ahead of time so that you're adequately prepared. Um, lecture materials topics. And so you'll see here history theory student, um, that's going to be this history, and philosophy occupation is complex. So that's going to be my actual lecture material, um, a PowerPoint presentation that I'll be presenting in class. Um, sometimes if there's an assignment due, like say the quiz or something like that under assignments due, um, I'll have a particular assignment. Maybe there's a paper due or maybe there's something like that, um, some kind of an announcement I can put for your assignments, okay? So what I highly recommend is getting some kind of a planner, having you record 
all of your assignments, all of your due dates, all of your course times, right? So you make it to class on time. You have your assignments done when they need to be done. Um, and you're always looking ahead, uh, making sure that you're adequately prepared, okay? And, you know, maybe a student next to you, hey, you know what? Um, I saw on the syllabus, Dr. Lawson didn't have the YouTube video, um, but on Canvas it is. So make sure you, you keep an eye or make sure you watch the YouTube video, okay? Something like that. And so um, that's what I mean by helping each other out. So here are all the things that students need to sort of manage, right? And these are the tools that us as faculty prepare for you to help you manage all of these things. So references, resources. Um, so what I find helpful again is when I'm just initially planning out a semester, um, I print off these blank um, and printable calendars um, just to hand write. Um, and then later I'll go in and I'll actually have a daily a daily planner that I'll write down my course content, I'll write down any appointments, meetings, those kinds of things. And so feel free um, to go in, it's a free calendar template, it's blank printable. Um, I have found other organization tips for graduate school specifically. Um, and so there's a couple little resources here, how to stay organized, um, time management mistakes. I feel like when we look at the mistakes, we can, oh yeah, that's right, I do that mistake. I can probably work on that. And then importance of time management and overall um, tips of being productive, the importance of time management. So if you're like, eh, I don't need to know about time management, um, this would be a good resource for you. Um, because again, time management is ongoing. You're going to have to manage your time throughout your career not just grad school, but throughout your career um, and even through your personal life. And so hopefully these strategies sort of help you um, plot out your time and, and manage your time more effectively. So what I'd like you to do is submit the following in Canvas as a little assignment. I want you to take a picture, a screenshot of how you are scheduling and organizing your time in whatever planner you're using. So maybe it's a written planner, maybe it's this, maybe it's this, okay? I wanna see that you have something that you are scheduling your time, okay? I want you to provide a brief reflection on its effectiveness. So you know what, I'm trying to use this daily plan or this monthly planner here and there are so many darn courses and so many darn assignments i can't keep it all straight and i it's not really effective for me okay and so then maybe in part three you can provide a strategy that you can implement to improve your time management organizational skills so you know what i found this planner at walmart and it not only has a monthly calendar but later on, it has daily calendars. So the daily calendar, I'm able to write out my assignments. Um, I cross them off when I'm done with them. I'm always looking a week in advance. Um, and so um, that's an idea that I have to increase or improve my time management organizational skills. Okay, so I'd like to see um, you guys submit something like this. Again, picture, screenshot of what your, your process is explain it a little bit, how is it working for you? And we all can improve on time management organizational skills. So let's provide a strategy um, that we can do right from the get-go to help us manage and improve. All right, thank you so much. Um, we will all get through this together.